Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am the Furniture Flipping Teacher. I recently resigned from my full-time job as a kindergarten teacher and I am here to show you how I take old and outdated furniture and give it a new life and give it a new purpose. I hope to inspire a creative way for you to also earn a little bit of extra income or even take the furniture in your own house and give it a new life. Personally, Neiman and I are on a journey for us to save up for a down payment on a house, and that is being all done by the profits I make from flipping furniture. Today, I am going to be flipping this beautiful buffet, and I am going to be giving it a new life. It is just a little bit outdated, and it has some scratches and some nicks that I am going to get rid of. And you know our first step? Let's remove the hardware. This buffet even has that velvety felt lining here on it, so you can tell it is truly a buffet. When I take off the hardware, I go ahead and keep it all in one place. I'm actually gonna be reusing this hardware. It's kind of unique and I'm probably just gonna clean it up and maybe even give it a fresh coat of paint. But other than that, it's gonna stay the original hardware. So this piece is actually completely solid wood. I'm not for sure on the type of wood it is, but I know it's solid. I can tell uh, this actually is veneer here on top, but underneath is still even solid wood. This is an old buffet, but it's in really nice shape. I actually got this buffet for only $60 on Facebook Marketplace. So that was a pretty good deal for the shape that this is in. And I'm hoping to turn it around and sell it for a pretty good profit. Maybe listing it, maybe listing it at 400 or so. So sometimes with older pieces, the screws kind of get stuck in there and don't want to turn. So what I'll do is I'll just go back with a regular screwdriver and do it a little bit slower with a little bit more muscle. So if you don't have a drill, you can also use just a regular screwdriver takes a little bit longer, but still totally doable. I am not going to touch the insides of these. I might put a little bit of uh, furniture salve wax butter on it, but other than that, it just maybe needs to be clean, but I'm not planning on painting the insides of those. Neiman to the rescue. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that little fake keyhole back on there. If I do, then I'll spray paint it to match the hardware. If I don't, then I'll need to fill these holes. So, kinda of undecided. But, now we've gotta clean. I'm gonna just be using some Super Clean. It's a degreaser, which is something that you really need to make sure is in your cleaner. You can use Dawn dish soap, crud cutter, anything like that but super clean, I just kind of had on hand. We just don't know where it's been and it has, you know, <coughs> it has those dirt and grease and oils from your fingers and that's just going to really not allow that paint to adhere to the surface. So we need to clean all that off to give that paint something to grab onto. And you guys know I've got my trusty two compartment bucket here. And on one side, I just use this one to clean with the cleaner. And then the second side will be clean rinse water. I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with this buffet. I thought of going blue and then I was just like, Ugh, I've done a lot of blue lately. And 
I was just feeling something else. So I actually got some inspiration from another fellow flipper in Canada. So I will share with you their information in just a little bit, but I don't wanna give anything away yet. So keep watching because this is going to be a wonderful flip. So this is um, some dirt and oils and stuff, but it's also a little bit of coloring from the actual finish of the piece because that degreaser, that's a pretty harsh chemical. And so it's just gonna take off anything that's loose. This also tells me that I am going to need to do a primer, especially because I am doing a little bit of a lighter color. I don't want any of this popping through and then after I sand I'll probably break the finish a bit so we don't want any of that coloring of this dark wood popping through our paint. I've gotten a lot of questions you know prime not prime. I, I tell you guys when in doubt prime it out but it's not a hundred percent necessary on every flip as long as you prep correctly meaning you clean like this and you sand scuff sand at least a little bit especially if it's this glossy finish then you should be okay without priming you know primer not only helps the paint adhere though but it also covers that for instead of getting bleed through it would be covered by that primer so you know just leave it up to you but for the most part probably at least 75 percent of the time i prime so now that we've got everything cleaned we're just going to go ahead and rinse Okay, so I am ready once this dries. I'm probably gonna dry it with my towel. But once this dries, I am actually going to attempt to do my best to save this top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sanding down the veneer on top. So with veneer, what it is is this little thin layer of wood that goes on top of the other wood. And if you come back here, you can actually see, this one is a little bit tricky, but you can actually see that this is a different layer of wood than this little tiny layer here. That's the darker. So likely this wood is a little bit cheaper wood, but this is actual solid wood. Sometimes it's just plywood under there or even MDF, but this I can tell is solid wood, but it does have that layer of veneer. So with veneer, like I said, it's really thin. So when I'm sanding it down to the raw wood color, I am going to need to be very careful that I don't break through that veneer or else we'll have to paint and we won't be able to save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand. I don't know how long this top is gonna take me, but hopefully not too long. Since I've got my surf prep sander, that really cuts that sanding time in half. You can use my code FFT10 for 10% off if you guys are interested in grabbing your own surf prep. I right, got that sanding done. It probably only took me about a half hour, so not too shabby. Fortunately, on the actual top of the surface, I did not break through any veneer. But then, unfortunately, down here around the trim, there's just a few spots where the veneer kind of got broken down a little bit too much. That was even thinner than that top layer. But I do have a solution that I am going to actually try and it's actually something that another fellow flipper did. And you know, it's always great to just utilize your resources. So I'm not copying anybody, but just to take inspiration from other people. So I will show you that in just a little bit and we'll be able to kind of mask that veneer that's missing there. And in the meantime though, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some wood filler because while I was sanding, I just noticed a few spots where there were some gashes and I 
Really want this to be a smooth finish when I'm done, so I'm gonna take some Minwax wood filler here and just go ahead and apply that onto the drawers. All right, I think I got them all. And so that's gotta dry for a little while and then we'll be able to sand those down and apply some primer. Our wood filler is all dry and so I'm just gonna take a medium fine grit sanding block and go ahead and sand that all smooth. We're just filling in some of those little nicks and dents. Okay, now that everything is smoothed out, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe everything down with a microfiber cloth to get all that dust off because we don't want that around when we go to apply our primer. Okay, so I just gotta remove the drawers and then we'll be ready. Let's prime. So I'm gonna be using gray primer today because that is the color basically that I'm gonna be applying. So why not get a first coat on there? And I'm just using a, an oval brush to apply it. I wanna make sure it's not too thick in some places. So just going in the same direction, evening everything out. Alrighty, our primer is on and while that is drying, we're gonna go ahead and work on the top up here. So let me go put this in a bag and I'm gonna show you what my plans are to salvage that beautiful raw wood top. All right, so I am going to show you guys a technique that I personally have never done before, but I saw Christina over at Pretty Distressed do this technique on some of her raw wood tops or even entire dressers. And what it is, is it's gonna be a paint wash or basically staining with paint that's watered down. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pour some water in here. And then I am going to just take my brush, it's a scarlet brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and wet down the whole entire surface. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a paint and it's putty. So it's a light beige tan color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my container. I don't need too much. Okay, and then I'm also going to pour some water in there because we're doing about one part paint and one part water and so that it's very very watered down you can see it's basically watery paint okay so now we're gonna take that same brush and we're gonna apply the paint, the paint wash onto the surface to kind of dull it down a little bit. So the goal is for it to kind of soak into the wood. This might be a fail because of these wood colors popping through this red, but we'll see. If it's a fail, then I would say my plan would just be to give it a coat of boss and paint it all the same color. So I've got my lint-free cloth here and I'm just gonna wipe away the paint. And what that's gonna do is basically just lighten up that wood tone and make it more cohesive. Like I said, it's a paint wash and it's a stain with paint and water instead of having to do anything with oil-based paints or anything like that. And then depending on how dark or light you want it, I can do another coat if I feel like it. But you just wanna make sure you kinda of go all the way across. That way you've got even streak marks if you see any. You just see how that toned down that red color. I wanna say this was definitely mahogany, 
but I can't be for sure. I just don't know wood types yet. It's okay that I got some on there. I'll just have to paint that over. But there we go. Wow, I, I like that. So shout out to Christina. If you guys don't follow her, go over to her channel and subscribe. She's got videos every Saturday. Love her content just as well. So that's that paint wash. So that's just gonna dry just as regular paint. And then we'll go ahead and come back with a clear coat just like we would regular paint because we need to have that top coat. This is gonna be a high traffic area most likely. So we've gotta have that layer protection. So the primer down here is dry. So while the top's drying, we can go ahead and do a layer of paint on the bottom here. But first I wanna smooth out that primer to make sure that there's no rough spots and to make sure that my paint is going to go on nice and smooth. So I've got an extra fine sanding block here and I'm just gonna go ahead and sand down the whole thing. The goal here is not to remove any of the paint, but simply to smooth it out. This is a pretty curvy piece, so I'm just gonna get where I can. The primer is actually not seeming to be too rough, so that makes it really easy to smooth out. Okay, always wipe back the dust before you paint. If you don't have a microfiber cloth, then something like a really, well, not really damp, but not too wet of a cloth. Towel could do as well. You're just trying to get all that dust away so that it's not gonna get caught in your paint. All right, I'm gonna be using driftwood for the base, which is kind of a neutral. It looks to me like it's got a few green undertones in the gray beige color, kind of a grayish, I guess you could say. So I've never used this one before. I'm excited to try it out. Like I told you guys, actually, I got inspired by Brandon and he also has a YouTube channel. We will pop it up right here, but he did a really similar buffet in a color Driftwood by Country Chic. And I've got Driftwood by Dixie Belle, so I'm gonna try to kind of achieve his look. So go check his channel out as well. He does amazing furniture art and he is great. And he's only 17 years old, so the amount of work that he puts into his pieces amazes me and I it's awesome so definitely go check that out I poured a little bit into this container and then I'm just gonna add some water as well you guys know this I love to thin out Dixie Bell's chalk paint and other chalk paints as well um, it's just a little bit thick for me, so I'm not thinning it out as much as I did the wash, but I'm just thinning it out enough so that it's gonna go on nice and smooth. I'm gonna be using two different brushes. We've got the round small brush, and then we've got the scarlet brush, both by Dixie Belle. You guys know how much I love these palm handheld brushes. Definitely recommend. And then this one will help me get onto like things like that nice and easy instead of getting it all over the place. So let's get started. Thanks, Mom. Watermelon. That watermelon is really good, even though Neiman took half of it. But it's a good snack to have in this hot summer days. And the first coat is all finished up with the driftwood. So I like the way that it's actually looking. It, it's a gray, but like I said, it has like that greenish, tannish undertone. So I think that that really complements the top really nicely. And if you noticed, I did have to kind of go back and do a little repair. So I'll have to do a little bit more paint wash right there um, when, that, when I sand that down. And then the hardware, I'm gonna be working on that next. And I'm gonna be spray painting that a darker color so that it kind of pops against this lighter neutral color. 
So we're gonna let this dry now and then we'll move on to the hardware. Okay, we're ready. I got all my hardware laid out here and I'm gonna be spray painting it using oil rubbed bronze. So it's a darker bronze color. And I just wanna use this to just make sure that it's defined against that lighter neutral color. And you can really spray paint any type of hardware um, as long as you go back and do a clear coat over the top for that protection, you should be good to go. I'm gonna do the backs of the handles first and then that way later when they're dry, I'll flip them over and come back and do another little layer. When you're doing a spray painting with hardware, you just wanna do light coats and you might need to do more than one. But just light coats, don't hold it over one area for too long because you wanna avoid those drips. That should be good for the first coat, so we'll let those dry. And in the meantime, the buffet is ready to have a second coat painted on. So we're gonna be working in the garage today because it's pretty hot out there. That sun is scorching and it's a little bit cooler in the shade. So I'm gonna grab my fine grit sanding block again to smooth out that first layer of paint. And then we'll be ready for coat number two. The same as when we smoothed out the primer, we're not trying to get rid of any of the paint, just trying to make sure there's no rough surfaces. So there were just a couple of spots that I had filled with some wood filler and the first layer looks like it didn't quite cover this one all the way, it was a gouge. And sometimes that happens where you'll notice that something needs to be a little bit more filled in after a couple of coats of paint. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in. It'll dry probably by the time I'm done with the, first, the second coat on the actual buffet base. And then we'll just sand it down a little bit and we'll be ready to paint. There's just a few little spots. Like I said, I just want this to have like a really seamless look. Um, sometimes it depends on what style you're going for on whether or not you want to have these nicks covered or just kind of make it the character of your piece. It's all up to you. All right, and I think that should cover it. So that'll dry in no time. So remember, if you don't want to wash out your brush between coats, you can put it inside of a Ziploc baggie and that'll last for at least a few days. So that's what I like to do because I hate washing brushes, I'm trying to think of a better way. But I'm just gonna wet down my surface here again to make it go on nice and smooth. And we're using that Scarlet brush, same as I did yesterday. So we got that second coat on the buffet all painted on. So I'm just flipping these over, getting ready for that other side to get sprayed as well. Those ones I don't need to flip, but I'll probably just do another coat. So that'll dry, and then we'll do a top coat on that, like I said, to give that the utmost protection. The second coat is all dry, so we're gonna go ahead and apply the top coat, which is that protective layer. And I am gonna be using Satin Clear Coat from Dixie Belle. This actually is becoming one of my favorite because I am really a matte girl. I like the flat finish, but this satin is, it just gives just enough shine where it's not like glossy but it's a little bit shiny and then it also has a little bit more protection than the flat coat might have so we're gonna go ahead and apply this to all of the surfaces including the top as well um, because again that's just a paint wash so that'll be just fine to have the same water-based clear coat applied to the top there when you're doing top coat 
you can choose what type of brush you want to use. I personally have been lately using these more fan style brushes where it kind of opens up, I guess you could say, and covers a little bit more surface. I used to use those foam brushes, but I'm just kind of getting away from those as I feel like I have a little bit more control with these. But just even strokes, thin layers, getting all of the coverage, and then I just like to kind of go right back over it where I go from one side to the other side all in one direction so that it has that nice finish. So like I told you, we're gonna be using some top coat here on the hardware, so I'm gonna use satin clear, and this just is gonna protect everything from that wear and tear. Okay, so we'll just let that dry, and then our last little step before putting everything back together is gonna be to do that last top coat on the top surface. So I'm just gonna do even layers, across the whole top here, and then I'll go down onto the edge as well to get that full coverage. Okay, so all that's gotta do is dry here, and I might come back and do one more top coat on the top just because, you know, that's gonna get lots of traffic there. Um, but other than that, we're about ready to put everything back together. All right, I'm about to put the drawers in, and then after those get in, we'll be able to go ahead and attach all the hardware. It's gotta go nice and slow when you're putting these drawers in. Make sure you're not gonna hit anything especially around the sides and the bottom, everywhere you painted basically. Remember, it's gotta have that cure time before it's gonna be scratch resistant. So this is the time when it's just dry and it's still going to be very easily nicked or scratched. So just be really careful or else you'll have to go back and fix. Hey, hardware time, I'm gonna go grab it. Darn, I'm gonna have to go back and touch all that up, but I had to get that part in there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other door, that way I can get that out of the way. It happens sometimes, you gotta make sure that you go back and touch different things up. Hardware is all on and it is looking good. If I do say my say myself so say so myself if I do say so myself. And I've just got my little micro sander here and it's got really gritty sandpaper on it because this door over here is just catching a little bit when it is going in and I don't want it to later scrape off the paint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim down underneath here. I've done this a few times before and shown you guys how you can do that easily. And all you're gonna do is just take your micro sander and sand down a little bit of layers. So this is just kind of like a quality control basically. Sometimes it's even good to have someone else check it out uh, because maybe you'll look over the mistakes kind of similar to when you're editing or something like that. My two quality control checkers are Neiman and my mom and they will not let it get past me which is good to have because you know you want your work to stand out and to be good so that then you know word of mouth can help and things like that so just if you find any mistakes go back and fix them it's going to be worth it so we did our quality control check i fixed everything that needed to be fixed and we went ahead and staged it and took some photos now Again, with staging, it's really something that I'm still working on, and I think I just need to get a few more props to help me out. But all in all, simple does it best, I have learned. You don't have to go all out to stage it, but to stage 
just so that those people who are looking make sure that they can understand and maybe picture in their own house. So I took some photos. Remember, you wanna make sure to take photos of all the details and the insides of the drawers and everything. Just give them what they can't see unless they're here. Give them all the details. So when I say details of the photos that you wanna be taking, you know, capture what that hardware looks like. Open the drawers up and check out the inside so that they can see it's clean. Open the doors and see that it's clean inside there and how much space it's kind of given them. You can see on the sides, this particular one has dovetailing, which means that those parts kind of meet and they intertwine. It's a really great sign of quality to have on a piece like this because it just means that it's well made and that it's less likely to come apart and things like that. So you always want to look for dovetailing in general. I'll go ahead and measure it as well. And I'm going to post this on Facebook Marketplace in order to sell it. And I am thinking that since this is a solid, solid wood piece, like it's heavy. Um, and it's in really nice condition. I am thinking that I'm gonna go ahead and list this thing for $450. It's a bit high, but I think that the right person will come along. It's very neutral in color. I absolutely love the way that this paint wash came out. Even after two coats of that top coat, it, it just came out really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and get that listed over on Facebook Marketplace and we're gonna cross our fingers that we can get our full asking price. Well, as you can clearly see, this baby is still here with me. It has been listed for just a couple of days over on Facebook Marketplace at $450. I've had one inquiry and she was serious, but then she realized that it was too deep for her area. So unfortunately that didn't pan out. But I have confidence that this is gonna sell. Buffets are pretty trendy right now. And I've been figuring out that a lot of the times my furniture sells better on the weekdays than on the weekends. And I'm thinking that maybe people are at work scrolling through Facebook Marketplace rather than at home on the weekends. They're actually like busy doing things with family. That's my hypothesis. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do your guys' pieces sell more on the weekends? Do your guys' piece sell more during the week? I'm curious because for me, I would definitely say weekdays. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna leave it listed on Facebook Marketplace for $450 for at least a few more days, probably at least another week. And we might even be taking this one over to the Habitat Restore. They have that market over there that I've had a couple of pieces in. And I think that this one would be a great contender over there. I just wanna give one last shout out to Christina for the paint wash solution. I've seen her do it in a couple of videos and I was excited to try it out on here to just dampen down that reddish wood top on here. And then of course, Brandon, he actually is in Canada. You guys, I told you he's just 17. He does an amazing job with furniture restoration and repainting things. We've got a video on Thursday that you are not going to want to miss. So if you're not already, get subscribed down below. You guys have been waiting for this probably since right around the time that I started this YouTube channel. I'm not gonna give you any hints. You just need to get subscribed down below so that you are ready for Thursday's video. If you think you know what it is, let me down down in the comments. I don't know if any of you are gonna get it though. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed some new methods of how to flip your furniture. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.